So I get a bunch of questions and comments about my color grading, and I've made videos about grading in the past, but I figured it was about time to just break it all down and in one video show you all of the tools I use to grade my videos and exactly how I use those tools to enhance my footage. But before we even jump into editing, I wanna talk about a couple little things that'll help you get better grades that are actually things you can apply while you're shooting your videos. I have my camera set to shoot in a very flat picture setting, which basically means there's very low contrast, saturation, and sharpness, which just gives you more to work with and more options when you're grading in post. I also sometimes shoot with the intention to keep the detail in the highlights, which means that my videos are a little bit under exposed so that I can bring that detail out of the shadows in editing. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can jump into the editing portion of this video. And as a lot of you know, I actually don't use any LUTs to grade my videos. I just use my editing software's built-in effects. The software I'm using to edit and grade is called HitFilm, and pretty much all of the effects that I'm gonna use in this video are available in the free version, but I'm using the pro version just to have a couple other display options like scopes, which we'll talk about. You can follow along with this tutorial regardless of what software you're using, but if you would like to purchase any of HitFilm's products, there will be a link in the description, and that's actually an affiliate link, so if you use that specific link, then a little bit of the money will go to support my channel. And you can even use the code AIDEN10 and get 10% off of your order. All of that being said, if you're a Premiere user or a Final Cut Pro user, then these techniques are also applicable to your software and you can follow along with this as well. My grading process starts out with fixing a couple things, the first of which is white balance. And to do this, you just take the white balance effect, drag it onto your clip, and then drag the eyedropper to an area in your footage that's supposed to be white. So if you look at this shot, you can see this little part of the desk behind me. The edge of it is in the video, and that is a white desk. But if the white balance isn't quite correct, or if the camera has a bit of a cast, then that might not be exactly white. It might have a little bit of a blue tint, a yellow tint, or maybe even a green tint. So just take that eyedropper, drag it to that area, and that will shift the colors in your image so that that becomes white basically making your white balance accurate. Now, of course, white balance is something that you should make an effort to get right in camera, but a lot of cameras, especially like Sony and Panasonic cameras, have kind of a cast on the image, like the entire video has a very faint green tint to it. So if you're using a camera that has that effect, then this will kind of get rid of that. Another tool I like to use to kind of fix things in my footage is the gradient tool. So if I have a shot, where the sky is a little bit too bright, I can just drag a gradient onto that clip, use a black to white gradient with an overlay blend mode, and then use that in such a way that it darkens the sky and maybe even brightens the rest of the image. Depending on your clip, this can be an extremely useful effect for just balancing out the lighting throughout the image and keeping you from having areas that are completely overexposed or completely underexposed. The next effect that I'll add to my clip is called Curves, and this is the tool that I like to use to adjust the brightness and contrast of my shot. This part of the process is where it can be very helpful to use scopes, which are just different displays that tell you more about the lighting and color of your shot. For this part of the process, I like to use the Parade, which is basically just a more advanced histogram that shows you the levels of brightness in your shot. I start out by raising the black point and lowering the white point of the footage. So technically there aren't any completely white or completely black pixels in the shot. And even though this isn't really something that you're going to notice in the final video, it does help to give your footage a bit more of a subtle film look. Then I'll just keep using curves to adjust the brightness and contrast of different parts of the shot. And this really depends on your clip. The only advice that I would give you here is to make an effort to only add two new points to your curve. When you use this tool, it's really tempting to add a bunch of different points on different parts of that curve line, and this isn't the best thing to do. Even though it seems like it'll give you a bunch of control over every different luminance level in your shot, if you add too many points, you're gonna start to see weird artifacts and contrast in your shot show up. So what I try to do is only add two new points, one for the highlights and one for the shadows. And the advantage of doing that is just that you're going to keep a nice clean progression from light to dark 
and you're going to end up with kind of the smoothest looking shot that you can. Hopefully that made sense. Now that we've fixed a couple things in our shot and adjusted the curves, it's time to move on to shifting the colors of the image. And this is the part where it gets interesting. The tool that I use to do this is called HSL, which stands for hue, saturation, and lightness, and basically just allows you to shift individual colors in your shot and change how they look. This effect gives you a bunch of options, and the way you choose to use it really just depends on your shot and the style that you're going for. But there are a couple things that I tend to do on just about every single one of my shots, one of which is just shifting blue to more of a turquoise or teal color. I also like shifting the yellow tones to more of an orange color and saturating the red to bring out those details in the warm parts of the image. Depending on the style that I'm going for, I might shift the green parts of my image to more of a yellow shade or even desaturate them so they're almost gray. There are a ton of options here, and most of them are pretty fun, but it's easy to get carried away. No matter how you shift the different colors and tones in your image, it's very important to pay attention to skin tone. Even if you have amazing colors in your shot and it looks really cool, if you have an inaccurate skin tone, it's just... It's tough, it, it hurts to watch. To make sure you have an accurate skin tone, just be careful when you're adjusting the red, yellow, and sometimes even magenta parts of your image. Most of the time, I'm okay just eyeballing this, but there's also an option in the scopes panel called the vector scope, which gives you a nifty little line where you can isolate a part of that skin tone in your shot and then shift the colors so that the skin tone lines up with where it's supposed to be. So if you want it to be exact or you want to make sure it stays consistent between shots from different cameras or just different lighting conditions, then make sure you use that vector scope effect in the scopes panel, but I'm usually good just looking at my shot and judging the skin tone based on that. The majority of the changes that I make to my footage are done using curves or HSL, but there's another effect I like to add just to give the shot a bit more color contrast, and that's that kind of teal tint in the shadows. To make this effect, I just add another curves adjustment to my shot and remove some red from the shadows, basically giving them a cyan or teal tint. Finally, I just finish up my shot with a bit of sharpening, and for this effect, most people like to use a tool called Unsharp Mask, which basically only sharpens the lines in the image as opposed to the sharpen effect, which sharpens everything. So you're gonna have sharpening in even the blurry parts of your shots or sometimes the grainy parts of your shots. Instead of unsharpen or unsharp mask, I still prefer to use the plain sharpen effect. So even though this might bring out a bit of the grain in your shot, I kinda like the grittier aesthetic that it gives to the footage overall. There are a couple of different options here, and if you try out both, then chances are you'll disagree with me, but no matter how you choose to do it, sharpening your footage is generally beneficial. Finally, if I notice that my shot has very blown out distracting highlights, I'll add an effect to soften them out, but I made an entire video about how to recreate that pretty recently, so I'll link that right up here. That's all for this one, but before you exit out of this video, just go down to the comments and let me know how you like to color grade. Let me know what style you like to go for and the tools that you like to use to achieve it. And I'll take a bunch of those comments and include them in next Saturday's tutorial. But that's all for this one. I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. But that's all for this one. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.